Morning lovely peoples, hope you're well. In our last thought on our series uh, of our heavenly Joseph, we looked at the start of Joseph's story and the parallel theme concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, heaven's beloved son. Today I would like to have a look at the next event in Joseph's story and think about the Lord Jesus as an obedient son. Let us read a bit of Joseph's life story from Genesis chapter 37 verses 5 to 10. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his fathers and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. I think it's worth noting from our last thought reading that when we come across Joseph for the first time, in his 17th year, we find him as a lowly shepherd, feeding his father's flock under the charge of his brothers. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He also said amazingly, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Both were pleased to humbly serve their fathers. The brothers under whom Joseph worked, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, would have been Dan and Naphtali and Gad and Asher, respectively. Joseph brings uh, a bad report of them to their father, which I think speaks more of Joseph's integrity than it does some naive, youthful, tale-telling nature. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Jacob wasn't already curious about the misdemeanors of his other sons and what they were engaged in. And probably trusted Joseph to report it if he became unhappy. Either way, it mustn't have been nice for Joseph to have been in the company of his brothers with this going on. And also the growing resentment they had garnered towards him. But it is testament to his character that here and even later... When he comes to his brothers again prior to his betrayal at their hands after this dream incident, that he was willing to fulfil the requests of his father with all humility and swift obedience. This reminds me of the Lord Jesus' words, I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Again, humbling it is to think that the Holy Son of God was willing to be made of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant 
and coming in the likeness of men and so he dwells among sinful mankind in the passage we have read the visions that joseph has reveals that he is destined for great things and at the end of our series we will find him second to none other than the great egyptian pharaoh but it is humbling to see that joseph was equally meek in his position as a shepherd boy as he is later as the prime minister of egypt there's a story told uh, of a marquis in france who was a shepherd and he was elevated to the great stature of marquis and ended up with a massive house with many rooms and one of the rooms had a uh, separate nature from the rest of the house and in it were rolling hill scenes a shepherd's crook and his clothes that he once wore while doing that job and when asked why does he keep this room his answer was simply this when i become puffed up and elevated in my own mind i go into this room and in all humility remember from whence i came when the baby jesus is presented to simeon in luke chapter 2 simeon says to his mother behold this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in israel by the end of that chapter jesus grows up and amazes the teachers of the temple with his wisdom even at the age of 12 years being about his father's business as he increases in wisdom and stature and in favor with god and men as mary bears witness of these things the bible tells us that she kept or pondered all these things in our in her heart the parallels here between Mary's and Jacob's children and their thought processes concerning their behaviour is striking. In verse 11, particularly of our reading where we read, And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. When we consider the nature of of Jesus' mission to come into the world, that he would become the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And we bear in mind the hostility that would be railed against him. It is truly staggering to read those words in the Garden of Gethsemane, that Jesus praying, uh, knowing what lies ahead, Father, if it is your will, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done and so the father sends the son to be the savior of the world and in full obedience heaven's beloved son comes and willfully fulfills the father's command i love the words of the third verse of the carol once in royal david city and think they are a fitting close to our thought as we have thought about Jesus and Joseph and through all his wondrous childhood he would honour and obey love and watch the lowly maiden in whose gentle arms he lay Christian children all must be mild obedient good as he let's pray heavenly father we thank you again for these striking examples between joseph and jesus the obedient son obedient in all things and willing to humbly follow the commands of their father and we thank you lord the delight in which they did it as well without murmuring without back chat in full reverence 
Lord, we know it's difficult to be obedient, but we pray, help us to be mild also. Help us to be obedient. And dare we, as we've said from the carol, as good as he. Lord, help us to strive towards that as though difficult it can be. Lord, again, especially in these times when this virus is about and we are alone or, or maybe stuck in our houses with those around us that we know so well and so often the flaws in our characters can come out so easy uh, as a result. But Lord, help us to be good. Help us to be patient. Help us to be kind. And we pray once more again, Lord, that you'd continue uh, to protect us from the effects of this virus. And Lord, if we are unfortunate enough uh, to have gotten it, help us, Lord, to rest on you as we fight the battle through it, knowing that you are keeping us safe and will bring us through it. So Lord, again, God us, keep us, protect us, be with our loved ones and families, we pray at this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and enjoy your day.